do you have like any questions and i also do not mind if people have like different opinion that's good because then i can show you why you are wrong i don't mind people with different opinion because it's fun arguing and it's fun discussing in your opinion trading a control board for a normal watch swift mm, no obviously not pink watches are way more expensive whereas normal watches are free so why would you do that okay let me just go into into it myself if you are buying a pink watch without knowing why you're buying it then you're buying it without intention and then you're like using the gold wrong right same way that if you were to buy an item there also has to be an intention behind it let's say you are playing uh, an adc an enemy has like relatively squishy team and they have some 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 uh, spells that you need to dodge then gale force makes sense but if they are playing like relatively tanky team and there's no skills that you need to dodge necessarily like any really important skills then why are you buying gale force you know it's the exact same thing it's the exact same logic and if you can't understand that then you are stupid and you should leave uh no but you cannot buy a pink ward in base let's just say you're a mid laner right you base and then you buy two pink wards why are you buying two pink wards you naturally want to place a pink ward in a spot where it can stay right where you can defend it same way that if you're setting up an objective let's say you're setting up third drake or you're setting up uh soul or something like that you don't want to place your pink wards in here because they will get taken you want to place your normal wards in here and your pink wards where you can defend them you know something like this it can be here it can be here if you can't defend them then you are placing them wrong they like it's essentially what like uh, 105 gold because you spend 75 and enemy gets 30 and then also xp so it's essentially 105 gold which is more than a cannon in competitive play why i think pink was uh, even more misused if you are a good team let's just say like random you are here let's just use your team let's just say like bisons right if you have like real players they are able to track at least the jungler without having you know pure vision on him with support it might be a bit different but you cannot argue that you need a pink ward at all times to stay safe when if you're a good player you are able to track the enemy jungler or enemy support without having the information same way that if adc and support bases right let's say enemy adc and support they push the wave and now they have tempo they base you have a tracker in your brain you will know naturally how long it takes for the adc to be bought and that naturally has to stick in your your head if it doesn't then i don't know you should not be like you should not be playing competitive play same way you have support if you know that adc or not adc but wave is bouncing then obviously support doesn't have to go but and you should have a tracker in your mind that tells you okay he can be mid at this time or he has this roam timer and you don't even have to pay attention to this as the mid laner in competitive play because the support should be telling you so you don't even have to have this tracker in your brain you just have to listen and then the support has to keep track of this right or the jungler because they naturally have more time whereas the mid laner has to farm and he has to pay attention to other things that uh, are more important than keeping track of the enemy support since the support and jungler should be tracking this themselves and then it sh they should tell you right like support this wrong timer pay attention obviously don't hug the wrong side and therefore you shouldn't be needing the ping ward it shouldn't be like an essential thing to keep you me tracking the enemy jungler or pinging he is moving through river doesn't always mm, work sometimes nothing saves your bot lane other than yeah but that's different that's different like i don't care about solo queue we can talk about it in solo queue concepts as well right but if they are not able to do this then you know it's way different i'm talking about competitive play competitive play is my main concern for obvious reasons because the concept that i'm trying to like explain and the concept that i'm like i need to explain is something that can revolutionize you know how you buy pink wards because it's something that has been you know the normal thing to do buying like a lot of pink wards and just buying them for 
the sake of buying them for so long that I have to be very thorough in how I say things and I have to explain it well to change anything. If I don't, if I'm not able to change it, then obviously it's my own fault or I'm just, I don't have enough following to do this, to do so. Let's say you just power scaling mid, you don't necessarily need the pink for safety issues, but you still buy it to give info for the team. Is it with? Depends, depends. Let's say, let's say you are, you are buying this because you need to be defensive. Let's say we are playing like very scaling team, right? And we we need to defend when enemy has prior, then it makes sense to have actual information because you cannot track the enemy mid lane or an enemy jungler to like perfection without vision. So he might be in here without you knowing and that obviously will hurt your jungler. So if there's an actual reason behind buying it and you have a thought out reason behind buying it, then it makes sense. The reason might be wrong, that's a different topic, but you cannot buy this item without knowing why you're placing it. Because 75 gold, let's just say you base, right? You base and you have 150 extra gold, right? You have 150 extra gold. Now you buy two pink wards, that's 150 gold. Then the next time you base, you might be lacking 150 gold for a component or finished item. Because you spent this gold on two pink wards that you didn't really use efficiently. They didn't win you the game, they didn't change anything. You just bought them to buy them. And then you place the random ping ward here that doesn't make any difference because if you know enemy jungler's top side, you should obviously not be hugging top side. But who buys two ping wards in competitive? A lot of people. <laughs> A lot of people. Are you trolling? I can probably pull up like completely random bot and then find one person, support or jungle, buying two ping wars. Like a lot, a lot of people. Does it make sense when enemy team plays stealth champs like Twitch Eve? This is unlikely in pro play, but it might happen. I mean, there are very, like, there's a lot of cases where Twitch is being played and can be played. It, it makes sense to some extent uh, to have ping wars, but also, again, like, it's the same thing. Naturally, you should be able to track the Twitch, even if you don't have vision on him. You should be able to adapt to the situation and understand, you know, Okay, so Twitch is a stealth champion. He's able to do things that a natural support or normal support or ADC mean uh, can't do. So if you're sieging and you're playing against Eve, Twitch is different because Twitch can't just flank, you know. Twitch has to still come from a spot where he can be helped, but Eve can flank. So if you are sieging and you don't want to get cut off, or like when you are running, right? Back to maybe mid or something like that. And you are trying to take to two or take to two butt, whatever. Then it makes sense to place a pink ward on the side or even, you know, on top of yourself. Because if we spot her immediately, she cannot one shot anyone. So what's thing about mid? Uh, for mid lane, I think it's not that common to ever buy two pink wards in competitive play. I hope not, right? It's not something I pay like a lot of attention, but for support and jungle specifically, it's very, very common to buy two ping wars when it doesn't make any sort of sense. So how much does this idea change between competitive and solo queue? Mm. I mean, it's easier for competitive play, I would say. It's easier to adapt to this concept, but for solo queue, a lot of the time, right? If you spam ping, people will naturally like listen. Because if you're spamming enemy jungle position or support roam timer and they don't listen, that has nothing to do with you. In my opinion, you should always try to play the game as you are playing competitive um, to some extent. Because it is like the game is a lot higher quality in competitive play. And there are some things in solo queue that obviously are never going to happen in competitive play and are different. But you should aim to if you're a competitive player at least you should always aim to play the, the game as if you are playing competitive because if you play if you adapt to the fact that you're playing solo queue then you are mm, improving or trying to do things that have no relevance to you so the the next topic i think will be you know the intention part of it 
that I didn't cover. I covered it a little bit, but the intention part of it. If you as a support, right, you base now. You are basing. Uh, we don't give a shit about the AD. You are playing a matchup where majority of the time <coughs> you're gonna buy some pink wards, right? If you are buying these pink wards, but you don't actually know why you're buying them, why are you buying them in the first place? There always has to be a reason to buy it, so if you buy a pink ward and you have a winning lane and you know that you can defend it and maybe you're playing, you know, a Nord, Leona, any, any type of, like, roam support, Blitzcrank, having pressure in mid lane, like having a pink ward here, will naturally give you, like, the the window to walk through mid lane. Of course, even if he has a ward here, let's just say he has a ward here or he has a pink ward here, it will not, it will not cover you if you hug the side. So if you have a pink ward here and you have prio, you know that you can, majority of the time at least, unless enemy jungler walks in and takes the pink, you can defend this pink ward and you can defend this quadrant. So you are placing the pink ward with the intention of being able to move mid if we have prior and we can't do anything in bot lane. Makes sense? But if you're just buying it and then you're placing it here, let's just say natural thing to do I think for most supports is that they buy pink walls and then they just place it here or here or even here or here, but they don't actually know why they're placing it. So if you just place it here, many, many times you just end up giving the support or the jungler like 30 gold and you also spend 75 gold on this so you're giving them so much for no reason right but if you can defend this pink ward maybe having it here and you know if you have prior or having it here it makes sense because you don't want to buy a pink ward not knowing that you cannot like not like knowing that you can't defend it because again right you have a walking pink ward that costs you no money and you are allowed to clear wards in here and in here maybe and in here without having to spend your 75 gold item that will eventually just get traded off and if there's a ward in here let's just say enemy has like a ward in here it's not worth it to spend your pink ward on this ward because the ward doesn't give them a lot of information because also a lot of the time players when let's just say you are the jungler at like at this at this point here, you're the jungler, you walk in, and then enemy maybe gets scared and they place a ward on their way out. You know, we've all been in this situation. And then instead of thinking, does this ward actually give any information for enemy team? You just bump down your pink ward because you think denying vision here makes sense, or because your natural instinct is to deny vision. Where the enemy has vision. If we're not careful with how we are spending this ward, we're just giving this like we're just giving this for free. And this is why I'm I've been tweeting about like support player buying 16 pink wards before in a session of mine. 16 pink wards. How much gold is that? 16 x 75. That's 1.2 fucking k. I guarantee you, no matter what. You do not need 16 ping wards in a game. 16 ping wards in a game. Because you're not placing them correctly then. And this is also a question I got. Like what do you think is the right amount? The right amount, there is no right amount. The right amount is like, what do you need to do? Are you placing them correctly? If you need a ping ward for, you know, let's say uh, soul capture or first herald and we want to deny vision, that's already two ping wards. And maybe you're playing Blitzcrank so we want early pink ward here so that we can always like move mid so that's three pink wards right so if the intention is there then it's good but if you have no intention with buying the pink ward and you just like buy it for the sake of buying it then you are wasting the gold no matter what no matter what even if you end up placing it correctly but you don't know why you're placing it then it's bad you're wasting it no matter what so there is no right amount but you like i guarantee you no matter what you never need more than 10 even in competitive game and the problem as well like the main problem with tackling this concept 
is that a lot of coaches and a lot of like players as well, I would say, honestly, have made this illusion that if you have 75 extra gold, buy a pink ward, you know? If you have extra gold, buy a pink ward. So it's so stuck in people's mind that they have to buy a pink ward if they have extra gold that it's such a hard thing to tackle for me because a lot of people are like wired to think that if you have extra gold, buy a pink ward. And this just has to die. Like this way of thinking, it has to die because it is so fucking stupid and flawed. And a lot of coaches that say this are also stupid, in my opinion. Like I would, I will gladly speak out on this. If you are saying to your student that if you have extra gold, buy a pink ward, then you are teaching like the wrong things and you are misleading the student because if you cannot give a reason behind buying this pink ward, then it's bad. If you're telling him, you need to buy this pink ward because you're playing Blitzcrank and you need to deny vision in mid so that we can like naturally just walk towards mid and apply pressure when we have prio, then it makes sense, right? It makes actual real sense. But if you're just saying you have 75 gold, buy a pink ward, how, how can a student know? How can a student know that, like what he should do with this pink ward? So you're just teaching him the wrong things. And it is, again, such a hard thing for me to tackle because people are extremely clueless and coaches as well. In low elo, would it be justified in the randomness, inefficiency and pathing? Mm, no. Also, I don't, I don't care that much about low elo uh, because there are way like there are so many things that are more important than understanding why buying pink wards. But in competitive, it is such an important thing to understand, and also in high elo, it's an important thing to understand. But in low elo, there are so many things that you have to focus on that are more important than understanding pink wards, you know, and understanding. How can you optimize a little bit more? Because if the bar is here, you obviously want to raise this bar. You want to continue raising the bar. And if you don't raise it, then you are stagnated in your play and in your improvement, which doesn't make a lot of sense. So you always want to optimize, like even if it's like item builds, uh, like item builds and runes, or just, you know, understanding ping boards and understanding draft better it can be many many things understanding lanes so the last thing that i want to cover before i will like end recording and and all that <laughs> with ping wars you have to know if you want to place it aggressively or you want to place it defensively and this comes with the intention thing right if you are playing like a scaling you're playing a scaling team you're playing you know potentially like kogma lulu maybe you are playing i don't know like you want to have someone that facilitates and someone who's able to give resources to gain on the other lanes so maybe you have like sinsao or viego or something like that maybe j4 depends if you want to play more defensive because you know that at a certain point we just win the game then you shouldn't be aiming to place your pink walls aggressively. You should be aiming to have defensive vision. The same way that I talk about, you know, the sword and the shield in terms of drafting. Same way that if you want to place your pink walls or if you want to buy pink walls, it's because you want to place them defensively. Because you know that you're not going to be playing aggressive. You know that you don't have to force plays to win the game. Because when we reach three items or we reach X point in the game, the game is just one. So if you're playing like a scaling comp into like a more aggressive comp, you obviously don't want to be placing your pink wards here where you can't defend them. You want to be placing them in spots that will help you survive and help you get to this point where we just win the game. Um, this is more towards competitive play, obviously, because solo queue, it's shit like this does not matter at all. But for compar competitive play, this is extremely important to understand. <laughs> and let's say we are playing um, a matchup in top lane where we need to be aggressive and we need to we need to push our lead to win the game. Maybe we're playing like Darius versus On, 
something like that, or Darius versus Malphite, or in it, like just a very, very aggressive matchup in top where you want to smash the enemy laner, or maybe a skill matchup. You you need deeper information. You need information that can allow you to like adapt your trading pattern as you see it, or potentially like um, help you in the trade or not in the trade but before the trade so for top lane maybe like Darius versus Riven is a little bit better because both the matchups I mentioned before is like free stomp um, a matchup that is skill and you have to play aggressive to win it then you want pink bots deeper you want the pink bot in here for example because if the pink bots like if the pink bot dies right then it already has given you information it has given you information like the information it needs to give you so instead of placing like a ping ward here where it's like whatever if it like if the jungler's here it's too late you know if the jungler's here it's too late so it's better to shove your wave shove your wave go deep place the ping ward here and then you have information you need because if this ward gets killed you know that the enemy jungler is top side and you know that when he bases he will most likely go bot side and then on next base you can potentially go back and replace this ping ward because you need the information early and obviously if you do this someone else has to board here so you have full information so you can't get ganked like because he walks like this maybe or walks like this so there has to be some sort of cover and if the pink ward dies it has given you enough information for it to be worth the 105 gold that you're losing make sense same way that if a pink ward gets placed here, right? Let's just say the pink ward gets placed here. You're placing the pink ward here. That can be fine if the pink ward dies and it gives you actual very, very important information. Because if you spot someone that, let's just say you spot the jungler walking past, you have all the information you need. Then everything else doesn't matter. And same way that with uh, just normal wards, a lot of the time people are placing them in bushes. Motherfucker, it's already stealth. Why are you placing it in the bush? A lot of people are placing it in bushes when it doesn't make sense. Like placing it here will ultimately give you way more information than placing it in the bush. And for mid lane as well, you can place it here, you can place it here. Because it gives you earlier and better information. And for mid lane, or not mid lane, bot lane, but you can place it here, you can place it in here, you can place it in here. It is a stealth ward. Understand that it doesn't give you anything more if it's in the in, in the bush, right? With pink wards it's different because they are not stealth. So if you place them in here, they don't get instantly sweeped. Why do you think this happens? Do you think players are lazy? Because this seems, uh, this seems that you need to have a better understanding of other roles and some players, despite being able to play other roles, do they need not understand how they work? I think majority of the time people are lazy. I think majority of the time people are lazy, also in competitive play with their ward. Because a ward, like a stealth ward, can give you so much information if placed correctly. And it can also help you better in lane. I, like, I, I can pull up any random bot, I swear to god. In lane, there's going to be players that have placed it in the bush. When it doesn't make sense. If you play against J4, for example, right? He can actually jump the bush and then he can sit in here. Then it makes actual real sense to place the ward here but if you are playing against like hecarim he cannot jump this bush unless there is you know a blast cone and even then it doesn't really matter because if he blast cones over and you was like you spot him here you're probably already dead already i had a coaching session from nigo de pigu and he told me that my goal in solo queue should be to buy 10 control wards a game as mid lane d2 games by the way yeah, that is very clueless. Same thing. I don't think Nico the Pigu is like the worst coach. I think he's better than like the average for sure. But he might just be uneducated. I would say that. Because that is just like very, very clueless to say. And obviously you have no reason to lie. So I'm just going to trust your word. Um, but I'm pretty sure he's just uneducated. That's what I would say. Or just doesn't understand it yet because it's as i said before it's uh, something that doesn't get tackled often and something that isn't getting talked about often therefore um, it's the normal thing for coaches and players to think that they have to buy pink wards when they have extra gold 
even though it makes absolutely zero sense in majority of cases. Yeah, I would mainly just say uneducated and following the mainstream. And my thought process is always I want to optimize in every sort of way that I can. If that is laning, if that is runes, if that is items, I want to optimize in every way that I possibly can so that, you know, there's an advantage. Okay, no, no reason to shit talk him or just like to talk about that. As I said before, I think Nigo de Pigo is one of the better coaches um, from what I have seen. But also, he is very uneducated, you know, in this topic because he might not have this thought process that I have where I want to optim like optimize in every sort of way that I possibly can. It is very important to understand both of them and understand that if you don't place this one, for example, with any intent, when you could place it here, knowing that it is stealth, guys, this is a stealth ward that naturally creates its own bush, you know, then it doesn't make sense. Same way that if you are playing aggressive, you also want like really aggressive vision. Because if the pink board spots the enemy jungler, let's just say you place it in here or place it in here, it doesn't matter if it dies because it has given you all the information it needs to give you. Yes, and that's the thing, right? Why, why majority of games, why do you need a ward in this bush? It's not like you're gonna trade with anyone in here majority of the time. So if you're not warding here well, like knowing that J4 can jump the bush, like jump from here to here and then wait, then why are you ward it? If you play against someone who can't jump bushes and can't dash over the wall, like a Viego, for example, he can't do that. Why wouldn't you place it here in the entry for earlier vision? Because if it gets swept or it dies, it does not matter. It has given you all the information it needs to give you. Because now you know he's topside, you know that he will reset, most likely go bot side, unless something is happening with like bounce back and he is sitting out of his mind to get something on, on top, maybe, or just get an advantage well knowing that the wave is gonna be really really bad and you have to basically die for it uh, am i clown if you use normal ward when i can't when i can be chased so people swam attack move and when they go in bush sometimes it's okay to ward bushes by the way i'm not saying that you should never ward bushes sometimes it's okay even with like uh, normal wards right it's okay because if you're fighting bot lane right let's say you're fighting bot lane before you fight there can often, or like while you fight, there can often be people moving into the bushes because it can stop the natural attack. So if you are warding before or while you're fighting, it, it's okay because it makes sense. But if you're warding for the jungler, being a guy that has also been peaking, you know, challenger for multiple, multiple seasons in jungle, I know how bots, you know, can affect junglers. It just doesn't make sense to ward the bushes for many cases with a stealth ward that has its own little natural bush, right? I'm not top laner, but my two cents on that bush is that people sometimes don't have the freedom to go deep. Yes, that is true. That is true, right? That is true. And I agree with that and I know that. But if you have a shove, right, and you have a pink ward, if you have bought a pink ward, that's what I'm saying, right? If you're bought a pink ward, it's because you know that you can shove the wave, go deep, and then place it. Or because you want to play defensively, and there's a potential for dive, so therefore you're placing it here, and you want to play defensively for majority of the laning phase. Maybe you are playing on into something where your job isn't to smash the enemy laner, or win the, like, the lane, it's more to stay safe and to quote unquote re weak side, you know? Again, the topic at hand is pink wards. So if you buy the pink ward as a top laner, there has to be a legitimate reason to doing it. If you can't get the shove and you can't place it, then you don't buy it, right? And if you want to play defensively, this ward is okay because it, if it dies, it gives you the information it needs to give you. It gives you the information to get the fuck out of there, right? Because you don't want to get dived and you don't want to die. So it gives you actual real information. And of course, some of the time you have your own ward instead of the pink wards, so you don't even have to buy it. But it is crucial to understand like what wards actually do and why, like how to place them. Instead of just thinking, okay, so I have like these three wards, maybe I just place them randomly and then hope for the best, you know? 
because that will not give you anything that will not improve you is there any like competitive top laner in here um or just like a competitive yeah just a competitive top laner or high yield top laner because then i can explain this better because very often right in top lane yeah wazers here good very often in top lane a lot of top laners just place it here. Am I correct about that, Wazer? Like in the edge of the bush or like here? Obviously, you should never ever place it here. A lot of people place it here. Never ever do that. Always in the edge. Very often, people place it here. <laughs> if you have the time to go here, majority of the time, you also have the time to go a little bit deeper and maybe place it here. Sometimes you, you are going to give some CS for that, and that's never the case. Like you should never do that. You should never go this deep. If you know that you're gonna do CS, but you should set it up in a way where you can go deep and, and place it like here at the entry or here. Set up the wave state in a way where they can do, where you can do this. Because if you place it here, you are trolling. You are trolling. If you don't set it up to go deeper and you just place it here for fun, you're also trolling. And yeah, sometimes you cannot go this deep unless you have shoved a wave. Uh, like a slow push and you know that it's gonna bounce and you can't stay here obviously being a melee top laner then you can go deep and you can place the pink ward but this pink ward cannot always be placed you can never like not never but you cannot always go this deep and that's okay right that's okay then you don't buy the pink ward because it doesn't give you value putting it here for example getting deep information with the pink ward knowing that it can stay there for like five minutes if the guy doesn't sweep it because let's say he like took the pink ward, or not the pink ward, but the blue buff, then he has no real reason to check this ward unless he thinks there's a pink ward in it. So it can stay here for like until next blue buff spawns. And if you don't buy it for a reason, don't fucking buy it. Same way that you should be placing your natural ward or your normal ward in a way where it doesn't. Like, it, you are thinking about why you're placing it, instead of just placing it in this bush, because this is the natural, normal bush to place wards in. And the same thing obviously goes for bot lane. It's just easier for top lane, because it's easier to explain top lane, because it, they are more... Like, they are way more reliant on, like, in melee versus melee matchups, skill matchups, they are very more reliant on the correct vision than bot lane can be. Obviously, it doesn't mean that bot laners should not place it correctly it just means that it like this vision can be very like changing for your lane <laughs> why buy pink wards when you can buy battle stats and make yourself a better pink ward yeah you think green wards should come back into the game mm, no i think i don't think they should i think if if um if you add more vision to the game then Korea will be better because they are better at using vision. I think maybe it might be a little bit different. This, like, uh, but like, way way longer back, uh, you know, when SKT was like popping off, they were using vision way better than any other team, so they got way more out of it. So I don't think you should do that. I think it will. It, it, it could make the game mm, hard unless EU and NA and whatnot. Now actually, that's a good click on he don't sub button. Like actually adapt and think about the small things because in my opinion why like e like why EU and NA is like further back than China and and LCK? Is because they understand like the small things actually matter way more um, of course not talking about draft or anything just like gameplay wise 